Hello and welcome to episode 13 of Bicep for Real. This is the last episode of this series, so today we're just going to have a quick wrap-up session. We're going to look at what we've done over the series and highlight some of the key areas to remember and to look at when you're hopefully using this knowledge in your real-life projects. So this project, we focused on a real-life scenario where we've been given a task to look at Lambda Toys digital store project. They're moving from a paper-based system to a digital API for all of their stores to use. And so we've been tasked with deploying the infrastructure and the application on top of that infrastructure to run their brand new digital store. So we were given these requirements to, to look at a fairly comprehensive list of things we needed to do. Some of them are, are fairly easy to achieve. Azure only was pretty easy. That's what we just focused on, on using Azure for these deployments. But then we've got a few more things around like specific technologies we wanted to use. So things like containers, Dapper, NoSQL, all those sort of things some security requirements that we needed to meet you know, we looked at things like private endpoints and then some requirements about how we actually build and develop this system so things like needing multiple dev test and prod environments needing some resilience built into the system needing to capture logs and automate the deployments and so on and then finally we need to also keep a focus on costs so those are all the key requirements we've been looking at over the course of this series hopefully you think we've achieved those and what we then looked to apply those to was this infrastructure design that was given to us. And this was the actual Azure components that we were going to deploy. We've got our Azure container apps driving the service that's what's going to run the application. And then we have a lot of ancillary services sitting around that. So things like Cosmos, Key Vault, Container, all of those providing services for the containers. And then API management sitting at the front end that's actually going to service our incoming requests from the users, add some security and so on, along with things like VNets and network security groups and our logging systems with log analytics and application insights. So that's what we knew we were looking at. That, that was our design we came up with. We then needed to implement that into the real world using Opera's code knowledge and in particular using the BICEP language. And so this is where we spent most of our time. So you'll hopefully all remember our VS Code environment where we created our BICEP files and we followed a pattern to try and make this easier to consume and to manage. So rather than having one massive BICEP file, we had this main.bicep file where we then called out two separate separate resources using the module functionality. So we had this core bicep, which deployed some things like Cosmos, VNets, those sort of things. We had the Azure Container App bicep, which deployed the ACA. We had the APIM one, which deployed the APIM pieces. And then within that, we had the actual complexity for those particular resources was sort of abstracted into the resources. This is, this is the APIM one we've got here, and you can see there are a fair number of different resources we're deploying in terms of the actual APIM, some APIs, or even pulling in some data from JSON files to actually populate the APIs, but we're hiding a lot of that complexity behind this main .bic. We also had to deal with managing some resources that had actually been created elsewhere. So we've got this external resources.bicep file, and this is where we were, we needed to add a record to an existing DNS zone. So we had to look up that, that existing zone and use that. We needed to get some secrets from an existing key vault and then assign ourselves some write on an existing key vault. So all of that we did within this external resources by set piece. And that, yeah, that allows us to work with existing pieces. So at the end of that, we had a set of bicep files that were able to deploy the resources we needed in the order that was needed and to get those up and running in Azure three way. You'll remember and we had our different configuration settings. So we started off with just a dev.json that had the parameters in for our dev environment. But then as we looked to add more environments, we added a prod and a test.json, which had the parameters for our different environments. And then we looked at moving in that into our actual build process. So we created some pipelines and with Azure DevOps, where we actually deployed some resources using the Azure CLI task. And we deployed and created the resource groups. And we did that within different stages so that we could actually deploy different environments. And so this is what our pipeline looked like with our different stages of dev, test, and prod. Prod's currently failing for some reason. We'll look at that later. But yeah, this is our multi-environment deployment we created. And we were able to have deployments move from dev first, then to test, and then hit a manual approval gate before they went into production to allow us to add that manual approval step in there to stop anyone just pushing anything into the production environment. Then once we'd got our deployments working, we started looking at how do we add some more governance around those. So we started looking at doing some testing. And the first thing we did is to look at running the Azure ARM TTK as part of our deployment. I need to uncomment that in here, actually. We're here, I remember. 
So we ran the plate test tool toolkit using the extension I wrote to run our TTK test against our pipeline. So that when we ran that through, we were able to look at all those tests and see that everything had passed. And we were able to check that we were following all the best practices that were involved with our templates. And we were failing if we were not. And then what we did is we actually made that into a pull request process. So we added the requirement for people to submit pull requests to our repository rather than being able to merge straight to main. So people can't just edit the code that's, that everyone's using. You had to branch off, make your changes, do a PR, and that would run this test. First off, that would initially just run the TTK tests. But as we moved on, we actually did some more testing as well. And we looked at running some pester tests and we created our infrastructure pipeline tests here, written in PowerShell that basically went and checked a few different things, including the virtual network existed, that we got the correct subnets, that the correct size, that the Cosmos has got private endpoint enabled to meet our security requirement. And basically we started building out these tests to check not only that what we deployed was what we thought we were deploying, but also linking that back to our requirements document. One of the requirements was that we had to ensure security was uh, on all requests between the resources. And so private endpoint was a requirement for the Cosmos DB. And so we can make sure that we meet those requirements. And then in our pipeline, we added that in where we actually had to create some infrastructure to test this against. So we had a, a PR step, which went and deployed some infrastructure ran those pester tests for us, and then destroyed the infrastructure when it was done. Finally, we then had a look at modules. We'd already used them slightly within our main bicep to call out to those sub modules, but here we intentionally created a reusable module, a private endpoint to hide some of the complexity around that and how we could just create one module with all the individual things that are required in it, make it generic, add some inputs and outputs. And then in our resources, we were able to call out to this module um, using the module functionality. And then we took it a step further and we actually pushed our module up to an Azure container registry. And you can see it here in our private endpoint module in the container registry, ready for distribution. So that back in our code, we were able to link to that container registry and pull the module directly from there rather than having to distribute it ourselves using zip files or so. And with that done, We've got all of our resources deployed. We've met all the requirements that were in our requirement document. We've got our automated pipelines. We've got our testing. We've got our resources all ready to go, deploying into the different environments so that we can now hand this over to our operations team or whoever's going to manage it. And they can take ownership of this. And this environment can be into regular business as usual use where our application is running and being consumed by customers. And if we need to make any changes to our infrastructure, we've got a whole process now where someone, whoever it is who picks this up, can come in, check out the Git repository that's got all our files in it, make the changes, make a pull request, run all the tests to make sure it's, it's not breaking anything, get approved by somebody who's able to review that, and then automate the deployment of that into the dev environment, check that out, run to test, check that out and then approve a deployment to production when people are ready, maybe in a change window and get that rolled out into production. So what we've got here is an implementation of what I would do in a real life project with these requirements. And hopefully this has really helped cement how you can use Bicep and those other tools in the real world, rather than just some contrived examples of here's how to deploy a storage. Account. That was the aim of this project was to just see how things work in the real world give real examples that you can hopefully take away and apply directly to what you're doing in your day job. So I had great fun making this course. Hopefully you enjoyed it and it was really useful and look out for more content in the future around Bicep and other things. But thank you for watching. Thank you for consuming this course. And I really hope it's been helpful.